I was on the search for some history, some folklore, some stories, so I decided to go down to Kelso. Kelso, that's a wonderful ruined abbey and ancient history so rich. But it was while I was in Kelso that I met a wise old man from the place who told me a tale, a tale about a strange creature that lived not far from Kelso and was known as the Linton Worm. The Linton Worm, he said, lived in the 12th century and it preyed upon the people that lived in the countryside of this area. It was a ferocious dragon-like creature with no mercy for man or beast. The townsfolk and the country folk were scared to leave their homes the beast was causing such havoc. But one day, a brave man known as Lord Somerville heard about the dragon and decided he was going to do something about it. So Somerville travelled from his home far away to Linton near Kelso and went after this ferocious killing machine that was the dragon. Conventional weapons were no use, spears, swords, even gunpowder would not kill this thing. But Somerville realised that when the creature stood still its mouth kept open, so he managed to make this huge long spear from metal and attach a pile of burning peat to the end of it. When the creature opened its mouth, Somerville thrust the spear into the creature's mouth and killed it. What a wonderful story, I thought. I've never heard about this. So I left Kelso straight away and headed for the countryside. So I walked out of Kelso into the countryside, the beautiful countryside. First to the small village of Roxburgh and its amazing viaduct. But then I made my way down the valley towards my destination. First stop was the Borders village on the Lost Loch, also known as Moor Battle. Another delightful little village, a hidden gem. But this place is very close to the home of the Linton Worm. Despite the small church on the strange mound, this had to be it. This had to be the Linton Kirk. So I made my way over. The scenery around here is wonderful. The Cheviots and the winter sun beating down on them made for a fantastic sight. The old churchyard in Linton is covered in fascinating graves with some real strange and wonderful engravings on them. But I just got a sense of foreboding, a sense of fear about the place. This house. This, remember, was the home of this terrifying creature, the Linton Worm. Who's to say the Linton Worm wasn't still around? Anyway, I crept closer to the church full of anxiety and fear. strange feeling that something was following me was getting stronger. The ground was beginning to shake, but luckily I had my trusty old pistol in my bag. The tremors were getting stronger. I could really feel something coming to get me now. But then I remembered the old tale of Lord Somerville. Conventional weapons were no good against this beast. I had to get some sort of long spear to poke in its mouth when it came, gaping towards me to eat me. I found the longest lance I could find down in the woodland and crept back towards the church to face my fears head on. Destroy this beast, bring him at me, let him do his worst. I 
was going to be the next Lord Somerville. I was going to destroy this beast. Come on, wait up. I can hear him. It was in my head. It was in me or the beast. And so the, the story goes on, you kind of probably get the gist to where I'm going with that one. But the thing about this story, the, the Linton worm and the legend associated with it, is it's supposedly based in truth. And this is, this actually is the church at Linton. And the stone inscription above the church door here really does depict this battle. This Lord Somerville destroying this serpent or dragon or Linton worm. It's extremely well weathered and now it's uh, very worn down and you can hardly actually even make out what the inscription is. If you didn't know what it was you would be struggling to decipher it but, but it is a picture of this guy killing this dragon. Now we've all heard the story of St George slaying the dragon and we've probably even talked about it in our schools in the Scottish borders. But this story is exactly the same, it comes from the exact same school of legend and myth but nobody knows about it in the Scottish borders except perhaps people from Moor Battle or, or Linton There'll not be many folk come from Linton because there are hardly any houses here But why? Why is this not? Why is this not taught in our schools? Why do we not praise this guy Somerville for the heroic feat that he performed in killing this dragon and saving the Borders countryside for miles around. Is that a true story? Well, the, the hills in the area would, would suggest so because apparently the, 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 the huge mound that the church here is built on is where the worm died and was buried and is somewhere underneath, underneath this mound. I believe it, do you? Somerville. This is the name of the hero who killed the Linton Worm. But this is the only evidence I can find of that surname or title in the, in the graveyard. So they were still going about until 1932. I don't know if the family still. Oh no, 1971 actually. So it must be descendants of the family living about here somewhere still. Reveling in the glory of the great 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 grandfather who killed the world. <laughs> what I really want to do here today is put a modern scientific slant on this whole lint and worm mythology or legend or whatever you want to call it. And I've got some pretty high tech photo recording equipment with me here which I'm going to set up on the one mound here and see if there's anything we can catch for sure on film. Yeah so what I'm doing is I'm setting up my modern ultrasonic infrared photo detection system here on the tripod. Now I'll leave that one here at this side and then I've set up another one at the other side here. And then what that does is it transmits an infrared beam between the two between the two stations. And then and anything that breaks that beam through the night will trigger the camera and it'll photograph any animals or whatever else it is that walks between the two beams. So fingers crossed. Well, that's me back again. Had these on all night, so let's just check they're still set up. Yeah, yeah, they're still set up. And yeah, it's registering a few hits, so we'll take it home and see what we've got. That's 
asked me home now reviewing the, the footage from last night and well, here's the first day of this, so there's a fox. See that? I think. Yeah, there he is. Wow. That's pretty cool as well, but again, not what we're looking for, is it? Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe this. 